Good morning, Interweb, War Builders Log 19. Now, I said I was going to talk about topologies in this video, but I'm actually going to leave those until the next video. Because in this video, I want to fix an error from the previous video, or e hotspots, or specifically hotspot trails. I want to talk about ocean age heat maps and show you how to export stuff from Gplates. All going well, this would be the penultimate episode in this tutorial portion of the series. So first on the agenda, hotspots. Turns out I've been doing hotspots completely wrong this entire time. This trail here is actually not representative of what the island arc that the hotspot creates will look like. And to demonstrate this off air, I made an island chain layer here, which looks a little bit like this. If we play true, you'll see what's going on here. Every 10 million years, I spat out a dot representing an island from this hotspot here. And you'll note that the shape of the island chain is similar to the motion path that we put in in the last video, but like flipped and rotated. So we need to fix this motion path to reflect what the actual state of affairs would be. Now this actually turned out to be non-trivial to fix on my part. I spent days at this, but I think I've finally got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to open up our rotation file. And in the rotation file at the very top, we're gonna need to make an entry for plate ID one. So something like this just like we did before. I suppose the only thing to note is that plate IDs are always three figures. So plate ID one is zero, zero, one. Really important. I'll get rid of the line break, save it up, close the text editor, go back into G plates, controller command M, and then I'm gonna to go to the rotation file and I'm gonna reboot it. Crucial step, without that entry in the rotation file, the hotspot path is just never gonna look right. So I'm going to go F on the keyboard. I'm gonna select the erroneous hotspot trail and tell it to be gone. And just to keep things clean, I'm also gonna turn off my demo island chain here as well. I'm gonna go back to where the hotspot first formed. So in this case, it was 660. Hit F on the keyboard. I'm gonna select that hotspot, copy geometry to digitize tool, hit M to create a point, go to create feature, motion path, hit next. And here's where this differs from the previous video. In plate ID, we're going to put in one. And then in the relative plate ID, we're going to put in the ID of the plate that's overriding the hotspot. So this is the green stuff for me. So in this instance, it is 101. We're going to say that this begins at 660. It goes into the distant future. And we're going to call this hotspot trail 660. Next, then we'll hit add insert multiple times from 660 to zero in steps of 10 million years, insert, then go okay, next, and then we'll save this in hotspot trails and go create. Now, assuming we've done this correctly, we should get a motion path that reflects reality. So let's play. That looks a lot different to me. And just to confirm, I'm gonna turn on my island chain layer again, and now it perfectly matches up. And just for the sake of completion, I am going to time lapse fixing this hotspot as well. Same procedure. Okay, next on the agenda, ocean age heat maps. This is super easy. If we go to our ocean crust layer here, which is down here, twiddle down the drop down menu, go to fill polygons, and then go to set draw style, feature age, and then default. Oh, and also go to fill opacity here and bring the opacity back up to one. And what we'll get is we'll get a heat map based on the age of the crust. And that's why during this procedure, we were really meticulous about dating all of these crusts very precisely. So we could end up with this outcome. So I'm just going to quickly play through the simulation just so you can see all of this happening. Which I don't know about you, but I think this looks absolutely baller. And of course, this thing of coloring things by feature age isn't limited to just oceanic crust. Any layer here in which you've meticulously dated things, you can apply this coloring to and you'll get a heat map, which is just so cool. And finally, let's talk exporting. 
whatever is shown in the viewer here will be what is exported. So if you've got anything hidden, it won't export. Therefore, it's probably worth going through and just selecting and deselecting everything so you get like the right look you're after. For example, you could come down to your ocean layer here and you could unclip it from ocean crust. So you get to fill in blue around the whole globe and then you could turn the opacity back up. You could do the same thing for the land layer, turn the opacity of the land layer up, etc. Make it look the way you want it to look. Next step is to select a projection. We've kind of like implicitly been talking about these already, but you have your standard globe projection here. Rectangular projection is extremely useful for exporting maps and re-importing them back into other software like G Projector or Map to Globe, that sort of thing. I tend to work in rectangular all the time. Mercator as a world map isn't great. You should probably avoid it. Molwida or Molwida, I don't know how it's pronounced, is really good for just displaying something. Finalized world maps look good in Molwida. Same shtick with Robinson. Next, what you might want to do is move the orientation of what you want to export. So you can go to view, set projection. You can select one of your projections here and then select a central meridian. So for example, let's say I go for a meridian at 30 degrees. We go okay. And we'll notice that the whole globe, the whole view has been skewed over 30 degrees longitude. Now, obviously this is cut off. That's not very good. You could just manually move it back or you can go to view, camera location, set location and enter in the same meridian value in longitude here. So for me, that was 30. We go okay. And now it's positioned back in the center. Oh, and speaking of the view menu, if you don't want to see the lines of longitude and latitude, you can go to view, configure graticals, and then set these all to zero. Longitude delta to zero, or rather latitude delta to zero and longitude delta to zero too, and hit okay, and then all the graticules are gone. So mess with layer visibility, select projection, mess with the rotation, and then we're ready to export. So we'll go to reconstruction, export, that's controller command plus shift and E, and we get this dialog box. So we have two options here. We can export time sequence of snapshots or export a single snapshot instance. We'll do this one first. This is basically just taking a single still image of your world. So it asks you for the time of the export. Let's say we want the current time. We can just hit use main window time. And then we go on to add export. Now there's just like a bucket of options here. The only two you really need to be concerned with is projected geometries, which gives you an SVG file. So if you're working in Inkscape or Illustrator, that's the one for you. Or image screenshot here, which gives you the option of having JPEG or PNG. So that's useful for the likes of Photoshop or GIMP. I will do SVG. Select SVG. You can change the resolution of your image if you so desire. And you can change the name here and then go OK. Choose an export folder here and then just export snapshot. But let's add in another export. So let's go to add export. And we've already got an SVG. We may as well just create a PNG say. So I'm going to select image screenshot. Then I'm going to go PNG. Again, I can change the resolution if I so desire, or I can change the name. Doesn't matter. Go OK. And now both of these will be exported. And then I'm going to do export snapshot. Then if I go to that folder, we can see that those files have been exported. So we have a PNG, there we go, beautiful. And then we have an SVG file. And this is it open in Illustrator. Cool, so that is how to export single snapshots. So let's do export time sequence of snapshots. This is for when you want to make videos of your world. Export from, let's go from the start of simulation, to, well, our simulation ends at 600 million years ago, so I'm just gonna do that. And one million years per frame is perfect. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to spit out 400 still images that you can chain together in a video editor later on. So we're going to go to add export. In this case, image screenshot is your best friend. There's no point doing this with vector graphics. I'll go PNG. Again, you can change the resolution if you so desire. And for this one here in the template, I'd recommend getting rid of these bits here and just put in N. So image underscore percentage N, where percentage N is the frame number in the range of one to N. Basically what that means is all of your pictures will be titled image one, image two, image three, etc. All right, and then we'll go okay. Again, choose your target directory and then begin export. This can take a while depending on the size of the resolution you've chosen. All right, that took about three minutes real time, I think, something like that. So we'll close that 
I'm gonna go Controller Command M. I'm gonna save all changes, save project, and I'm gonna open up a video editor. So I use Premiere Pro, but it could be iMovie, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, all that sort of thing. And with the video editor open, all we need to do is find all of those stills and just drag and drop them into the video editor. And from here, I drag and drop them onto the timeline. And there you go, one video. I don't want to turn this into a how to use Premiere Pro video, but by default, when you drag your frames in, they're going to be way too long. Yeah, each frame is five seconds long. So what you can do, you can hit B on the keyboard, and then you can click and drag over all of your frames, go to one of them, and just drag it backwards to make it really short, maybe something like that, and everything will correct. And then you can play, and hey presto, you got yourself a video, and you can export it from here. Okay. So um, that's all I wanted to talk about today. That is the basic methodology done from start to finish, all the way from drawing your first super continent to exporting your final world. As mentioned at the start of the video, next time we're gonna look at topologies, which is a super powerful, albeit more advanced way of using g plates that ultimately leads to kind of nicer results, but it's not as intuitive as doing things in a very manual way like we've been doing them. So I'm only going to touch on it very briefly in the next video because it's a, it's a whole kettle of fish right there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. You guys, the patrons, Vanga Van Gogh, World Building Pasta, you are all excellent. Have a good one. And until next time, it grouse.